the tension Congresswoman uh, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez and ragheads Rashida Tlaib and Ilhan Omar. I was totally excited and pleased when I heard about 49 Muslims were killed in many... Many more were wounded in New Zealand. This is a great start. Let's hope and pray that it continues here in the, in the good old USA. The only, only, the only good Muslim is a, is a dead one. Congresswoman Rashida Tlaib reading hate mail she received in the wake of a devastating mass shooting at two New Zealand mosques. And now that terror-targeted sanctuaries has hit home here in the U.S., crimes motivated by religious hate on the rise. Our Chief Justice Correspondent Pierre Thomas is in here. And Pierre, you sat down with the leaders of three congregations shattered by violence. That's right, George. Sadly, uh, mass shootings have become a part of American culture. More than 150 cases so far this year. No location is immune, not even houses of worship. Houses of worship are supposed to be places of refuge, of spiritual renewal, of peace, joy. Sanctuaries to seek God. They're not supposed to be war zones. But recently, a massacre at two mosques in New Zealand. And here at home, attempted mass murder at a California synagogue that left one dead and three wounded. People are scared right now. This is something now that is going worldwide. Complacency is your enemy. We need to be vigilant, not, not fearful, but vigilant. These stark warnings for the millions of Americans who go to houses of worship each weekend from religious leaders whose congregations suffered three of the worst attacks on houses of worship in American history. Please, Emmanuel Churches, please, people shut down here. Please send somebody right away. Mother Emanuel AME Church, Charleston, South Carolina. Nine African-American parishioners gunned down during prayer meeting by a white supremacist. First Baptist Church, Sutherland Springs, Texas. We have six ambulances in route. 26 murdered during Sunday morning services, many of them children. Tria Life Synagogue, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. 11 shot to death during Saturday morning worship. Suspects talking about uh, all these Jews need to die. The aftermath hurt almost as much as what the shooter did in our church. Frank Pomeroy is the pastor of First Baptist Sutherland Springs. His daughter Annabelle, only 14, was among those killed. He and his wife Sherry were both out of town at the time of the massacre. He's still pained by having to tell his wife over the phone about their daughter's death when she was at an airport. Sorry, I decided I had to, had to call her, tell her, tell her by phone that Belle was gone. As I was at the security table about to walk through security, and I just fell to my knees. The memory's painful. Healing never easy, especially since these kinds of attacks on houses of worship keep coming. When that synagogue in California was recently attacked, Alan Hausman says the reaction at the Tree of Life in Pittsburgh was immediate. And it essentially just opens the wounds again. And it's really, really hard to see, see your folks almost reliving the entire event. And the healing can be challenging when the congregations continue to receive threats. Have you received some since? I received one as recent as three weeks ago. Hate doesn't take a vacation, does it? No, hate does not take a vacation. They say with the nation so divided, religious leaders and people of faith must do more to bridge gaps. We need to quit being so biased and start holding and loving one another and and having actual discourse and, and conversation. Before you say you're wrong, be able to say to that person, I respect you, I love you, and I appreciate who you are. But these leaders also say that in the face of the ongoing threat, congregations needed more than words and prayers. Well, of course, first things that we, we did was deployed a bank of cameras. Uh, the doors were locked. Uh, you can only access the church if there is security there or if you have an appointment. At Tree of Life and Sutherland Springs. The building we're in is, is secure, armed security. Any type of special event, we have uh, uniformed police officers there 
if people come in that we don't recognize, their uh, bags are, uh, are searched. We have done the cameras, the security, <laughs> barriers, several barriers. In some cases, the issue of security is quite personal. He bought me a gun for Christmas, mm -hmm. and we both thought that was the right thing at the time. Right. I've still not touched it. But with all the pain and challenges, the worship leaders have been struck by the resilience of their congregations. Any real healing sparked by their faith. How does one heal? How does one forgive? You really can't. It's not until you choose to let the, the love of God within you to manifest through you. Reverend Manning's answer came from the families of those who were killed during the shooter's bond hearing. I would never talk to her ever again. I would never be able to hold her again. But I forgive you. We have not seen that level of forgiveness so quickly. Usually, of course, it takes uh, some people some time, and as I said before, some members of Emmanuel haven't even gotten there yet. Make no mistake, the road to healing is usually never straight. I'm just recently beginning to say I'm okay. For a while there, she wouldn't get out of bed and wouldn't eat, wouldn't sleep. It's okay to tell everyone you're not okay, and it's okay to ask for help. And I can't stress the importance of counselors. In the end, these leaders just won't give in to darkness. We're here because there is far more good in the world than there is evil. If you choose hope and mercy and grace over pessimism and, and hate and divisiveness, you're going to heal and you're going to be able to move forward. You can hear you say they're not going to give in, but they're very open there about how hard this healing is. I was struck by how candid they were. They said they didn't just fall on their knees, pray, get up, and they were okay. That this was profoundly personal for them. Um, the wife of the pastor from Texas talked about how not only did she lost her own daughter, but that she's been inspired by the fact that so many in her church are moving forward. She spoke of one woman who lost an 18-month-old toddler. Oh my and she goodness. said, if she can get up and go to church and worship and move on, so she, can she. But then she. you hear about all the steps they're taking, security cameras, guards outside the sanctuaries. It cuts against the idea that these are sanctuaries. That's right. Um, I was recently at church um, with my wife, and we were walking through the lobby, and there was a police officer. Uh, patrol car stationed outside. And I was thinking to myself, 10 years ago, you would never even think to have security in a church. But I think, sadly, many houses of worship will be going this direction. You cover this beat every single day. One of the things we're seeing in recent years, hate crimes on the rise, now becoming a real national security threat, and, and, and a lot more focus on domestic terrorism. That's right. I was at an FBI briefing recently, and the official said that since October, there's been a 30% increase in the number of cases involving white supremacists, people who believe in white superiority. Uh, it's an ongoing concern. Uh, they're talking about uh, different things that they can do on the domestic terrorism front, but they say it's a, as an act of a period if they see. And when we, one of the things we've seen, obviously, there's more focus uh, now on gun safety, although there's real gridlock in Congress over that issue, some progress uh, in, in the states. What other kinds of solutions are our officials looking at? One of the things that people keep talking about is that they have to do a better job of identifying people who are troubled, who have issues before they act. In case after case, you see these missed warning signs. So law enforcement officials are talking about how can they connect better with communities and pursue these kind of cases before people can act out. The other thing that's being discussed is the fact that maybe domestic terrorism laws need to be uh, more specific to give police and law enforcement more tools to act. Free speech is a really prickly issue, though. Real prickly issue, but one of the other things we're seeing is that it all grows out of these deep divisions right now in our country. Well, in speaking with those uh, religious leaders, they talked about the fact that they feel like the country is more divided. They can feel it. And they believe that there needs to be more dialogue, more people talking openly about their disagreements in a more loving way. Peter Thomas, thanks for bringing us that. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.